Hello everyone, I hope you're all doing well. Today I wanted to talk about some of my absolute favorite brushes that I particularly love using for watercolor. I like storing my watercolor brushes in these two containers. The first is actually something I designed myself, and this holds my absolute most grabbed brushes in a fairly orderly manner thanks to the dividers. The second container holds my still fairly regularly used brushes, but ones that are larger, different brush shapes, or types that I'm not grabbing for quite as frequently. I figured we'd start with the first watercolor brushes that I ever fell in love with, the Princeton Neptune brushes. Now these brushes are synthetic, very specifically synthetic squirrel, and they're just really great all around watercolor brushes. When I first started to really get into watercolor painting, these were the brushes that I gradually invested in to add to my collection. They're actually quite reasonably priced in my opinion for the quality, but they're definitely not the most inexpensive option. Because they are a synthetic squirrel hair brush, they're a lot softer than what you'd probably expect a synthetic brush to feel like when painting. I've had these brushes for years and used them on countless paintings and they're still looking and working great. Next up is another one of my longtime favorites, the Royal and Langnickel Soft Grip Brushes, specifically the gold Taclon ones. These are an amazing line of synthetic brushes and also some of the least expensive. They also come in quite a variety of brush types and sizes, which is great if you're looking at building up your brush collection. I love using these when I want a slightly stiffer brush. They're great for lightening up color and blending paints out. I also love using them for my different types of gouache since they have a slightly stiffer brush makeup. Next we have the Raphael Mop Brushes. I particularly love of these ones because they come in smaller brush sizes than you might typically expect from a mop or quill-like brush. That means you get to use the properties of a mop brush to your advantage without having to possibly worry about sacrificing detail in a piece. These brushes can hold a ton of water and paint while still being able to keep their point fairly easily. I love using these brushes when I want a piece to be a little more loose and splashy. I can get a lot of coverage with them, but I can also still use it for some detail refinement. Next we have the Paulina Bright watercolor brushes. These are a fairly recent addition to my collection, but they're already some of my favorites. I like them for similar reasons as the Raphael Mott brushes, but these ones are a bit of a different shape and synthetic, so their bristles are a little firmer. That's very much an advantage to these brushes though. They keep their point beautifully and easily when you want to use them for more detail, while still being able to get the large brush strokes that you'd expect from a quill-like brush. It's also very easy to lift and blend color with these. Next are actually a couple of the smallest brushes that I own, the Windsor & Newton Cottonman Designers Zero and the Round Quad Zero. I love the Cottonman brush line in general, especially for their smaller brushes, but these two in particular I'm constantly grabbing for. Let's talk about the designer's size zero brush first. The designer's brush type seems to be specific to this Cotman line of brushes. It's essentially a brush somewhere between a normal round brush at length and a rigger brush. It's not as unruly as a traditional rigger brush, but because the brush hairs are longer, it holds more paint than a typical round brush, which is very useful when it comes to smaller brushes. If you're using a brush like this for any kind of outlining, it can feel like you're constantly having to stop and redip your brush in paint, but this brush definitely stops that. As far as the round quad zero brush goes, it's a little more straightforward. It's simply the smallest size of brush that I found that holds up and works great for watercolor. I actually have quite a few of these around my studio because I also use them pretty regularly for really fine details in prop and other model painting. I know that this brush is probably only like eight hairs, but when you need to paint obnoxiously small details in something, you'll be glad to have this brush in your collection. The final and in my opinion best watercolor brushes are the Windsor & Newton Series 7 brushes. I know, I know, I'm sure a lot of people just groaned at their screens, but let me explain to you why I think these are the best brushes. First of all, I'm well aware at how wildly expensive these brushes are, and I was also someone who was extraordinarily skeptical about them. I ended up inheriting a couple of sizes from my dad from his old university art supplies that were still in pretty good shape, so I figured I might as well try them out and see what all the fuss was about. And and uh, boy oh boy, my wallet didn't like me after that for a while. But seriously, these are obviously really well-made brushes, but the thing for me with them is that they have absolutely unparalleled brush control. These brushes could pretty much replace all of the other brushes that I just talked about for the range that you can paint with them. They're natural hair, so of course they're able to hold a lot of water and paint. I would say almost to the capacity of some of the mop brushes that I showed earlier, but the thing that really gets me is their tip. 
These brushes can hold their point so well that I can basically get the same size line width and control as with the Quad Zero brush with this size 5 brush, which is absolutely insane. When I first used one of these brushes, I couldn't believe how much detail I could get in without switching to a smaller brush. So do these brushes do some absolutely crazy thing that no other collection of brushes can do? No. But the single line of brushes could basically replace your entire collection of more round style brushes, which to me is pretty incredible. And those are all of my favorite brushes. I would love to know what your go-to brushes are for watercolor. I'm always interested in trying out new supplies, especially brushes. But that is everything, so thank you so much for watching, and I will see you in my next video.